Okay, what's up stream? We're back and we're going to be doing solos. There's a bad echo because um I'm I'm trying to I was trying to get face cam to work but it's not gonna work so yeah I'm just gonna be playing normal solos. I was. I'm gonna be a little laggy to start because, yeah. Because my wife is not used to this stream yet. Yeah, I bought Battle Pass for this season and I'm tier 56. I can't wait to get, I can't wait to get eight ball. That's what my goal is to get eight ball and tier 100. All oh, my streams had a big hiccup. Okay, now it's not so laggy, it's getting a little bit better. Yep, now we're better, back at our normal ping. That was really bad on my part. Like really, really bad. I missed so many shots.
Oh, I hear that special chest. There that sucker is. I'm like really laggy because I'm trying to watch my stream and make sure that I don't screw anything up while at the same time streaming, so yeah, I'm kind of all janky right now. And if you hear me like playing the game for so long, I know when I'm better and when I'm not. Okay, we're back on track. Yeah, this is like my fourth game on. I got a win earlier, win solos. I had nice loot, so. There's a boat trying to blow itself up over there. I don't know why, it's a weird thing to do, but okay. Whatever floats their boat. <laughs> Dang, if I would have hit that. Dang. stream for a while so I think some people thought I forgot about you guys but you know I'm just gonna be honest I did kind of forget about you guys no I'm just playing I have really bad Wi-Fi so I haven't been streaming much because of it and I lost I had to get a new mic and I'm just gonna be honest, like nobody ever watches my streams. I'll never be Nick A30. I'm 
I'm also working to go up in tiers because yeah. Because I wanna get my eight ball skin. That's my goal. <clears throat> if you guys listen very closely, you can hear my stream in the background. I have stream delay on so I nobody can stream snipe me even though nobody even joins my stream ever. I broke that kid. Wow, that's sad. Now I'll never be able to kill him. Wow, he's gonna go over there and drink a big pot, that little douche. <laughs> yeah, boys, I just did that. Dang, he actually hit that. Dang, people are rocketing me. of other uh, rockets nothing I could have done <coughs> I had four kills that's pretty good uh, it's pretty good for me I don't know about anybody else I'm pretty at, uh, I'm pretty decent I'd like to say I wouldn't say I'm the best because then I'd be thinking too much about myself and um, I'm not sure what I want to do do I um, I'm not gonna end the stream that's for sure I need to give you guys something to entertain you um. <coughs> I think I'm just gonna ready up. And then. I'm gonna see who's all streaming today. Which means you guys will not be hearing this. Because <clears throat> I'm not trying to get copyrighted. Nobody's streaming right now. That's a surprise. <sighs> no go. Still streaming from three weeks ago.
<clears throat> yeah, I'm watching this guy and according to him, there's supposed to be uh, an event that involves an octopus. I don't really believe it, to be honest. You guys might hear it a little bit in the background. It's nothing much, nothing to get me like copyrighted, even though nobody really even watches my stream anyway. I don't know how many times I have to say it to get it through my head, but it's all good. I don't need to have people watch me to make my stream fun. Oh, this he's actually sometimes annoying. Like he's still trying to find out this. Yeah, I don't believe it, buddy. You can tell all your fans that. Wait, there's no way you're telling me that. My ping is a little high. To be honest, I'd settle with 90 ping. If they give it just a teensy bit lower, I think it's because I'm trying to <coughs> watch my stream and multiple other streams while I'm playing and streaming. Maybe, I don't know. A little bit of lag won't hurt nothing. Yeah, an upgrader, but this place has no bricks, so I don't even, I can't even use it. Um, I went to this guy's stream and told uh, his stream to go to my stream. I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but if we got anybody new on the stream, let me know. Shout, I'll give you a shout out. Not that popular, but I mean, you'll get noticed by all my friends. I know how many people has already put in the comments, why the f are you not carrying that pistol? I don't know, it just doesn't, it's not worth as much as what it, some other people think it is. At least not to me, I don't, I mean, I'll take it. But it wouldn't be my average gun that I use every game. Like, I wouldn't take it over, I wouldn't take it over a normal SMG normally. But you know I'm feeling it, so I'm gonna take it over a normal SMG, I guess. All my friends question why I didn't, why I take uh, an SMG over my this pistol. Yeah, it's cool. It's, it, it's just the fire rate. That's all it is. Fire rate so fast that it can kill a person in milliseconds. Just like that. Um, back to lagging. Just 
I'm gonna put my pistol in my SMG slot because yeah, I feel like it. Is my stream taking up a lot of lag? Cause I feel like it is. Great, my stream's frozen. I should really turn off stream delay. Yeah, um, I've been playing a little over. It's really complicated. Like, I don't even know anymore. basketball their entire life but starting at an early age isn't a requirement for making it to the NBA because there's been a lot of players over the years that have started pretty late whether it was just a couple years before playing college basketball and then making it to the NBA or playing basketball for the first time while they're right already in college today we're looking at eight of these instances Eight players that started playing basketball a lot later than most Play other players and almost too late, but starting first with number eight, Joel Embiid. To think that a guy that's already showing flashes of dominance and looks like he'll be one of the best in the league one day, only so I'm listening to YouTube because, yeah, I just want to listen to YouTube. Is pretty insane. Joel's first ever time playing basketball was when he was 15 years old. In early 2011, he was invited to attend the Luke Mobile Mute's camp in Cameroon, Africa, only because he was seven feet tall. Luke found out that Joel had potential because at the camp, after only ever playing for a few months, he was making moves that players couldn't make until they had been playing for years. So Maba Mute convinced Joel's dad to let him move to America to play basketball in 2011. When he got there though, 7 foot Joel Embiid rolled the bench on a JV basketball team. So he got some help transferring to a better school in 2012, and that's when his career took off. He modeled his game after Hakeem Olajuwon. Dang, my phone's already dead. Where'd it go? So after only I was playing over basketball there. for two years, Joel ended up going to Kansas in 2013, and one year later would make it to the NBA at 20 years old. So within six years' time, Joel Embiid first picked up a basketball, moved to America, played for a major college, and will pretty soon be an NBA all Imagine how good he'd be if he'd been training since he was five or six, and just imagine how much better he's gonna get now when he has more experience. Number seven, Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman technically started playing basketball in high school and actually made his high school team, but the rumor confirmed by Dennis was that he was so bad he couldn't even hit a layup, so he was always benched or cut from the team. In high school, he had no confidence. Not graduated. sure if he was using this loot as bait or what. And I've spoken about this in my other videos. After Rodman graduated, he worked as a janitor until one day he grew to be six. It actually, almost worked. At 21 years old. So that's when he went to a local college and actually started to play basketball pretty well. He played in high school, but if he can't even hit a layup, I don't think that counts. So he didn't really start playing until 1983 in his first year in college. And then he was taken by the Detroit Pistons in the 1986 draft. So after really only playing basketball for three years, Dennis Rodman was good enough to make it to the NBA. And I think it's safe to say that he went from a not so bright future to being one of the luckiest guys on the planet with his growth spurt. Number six, Hakeem Olajuwon. Hakeem Olajuwon's favorite sports up until he was 16 years old were handball and soccer. He said that the first time he ever touched a basketball at 16, he knew that was his life now and he didn't care for any other sports anymore. By the time he was 17, he was 6 foot 10 inches tall and led his high school team to a national championship in Nigeria. 
and by 18 his coach convinced him to come to the United States to try to make the NBA one day. After joining the University of Houston and training with Moses Malone, Hakeem became one of the best college players in the country and was taken first overall in the 1984 draft. Only five years after trying out basketball for the first time, and by his sixth year of ever playing basketball, he was already an NBA All-Star. Number 5. Dikembe Mutombo. Dikembe has an insane story of how he started playing basketball, but it's not even the craziest one on this list. When he was growing up, he was always the tallest kid in school by far, and was just about 7 feet tall in high school. Up until he was 17, his favorite sports were martial arts and soccer. He had never even tried basketball, until one day his older brother brought him to a court hoping he'd like it. His first time ever playing, he busted his chin and told his brother he was never coming back. But the next day his brother made him play again, and Dikembe slowly fell in love with the game. He started playing for the Zaire national team, and playing games all across Africa, until he eventually ended up getting a scholarship to Georgetown University. The coaches there saw a huge potential for Matumbo, but his only true reason for accepting the scholarship to Georgetown was so he could use it to become a doctor. He sat on the bench for most of his first two seasons, backing up Alonzo Mourning, but when they started to play at the same time was when they became dominant. So only after six years of playing basketball ever, Dikembe was a starter for Georgetown University, and after only eight years, he was drafted fourth overall into the NBA at 25 years old. Number four, Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan was born on the Virgin Islands and was always an athlete as a kid, but not in basketball. His dream as a teenager was to be an Olympic swimmer and make the 1992 Olympics. But then Hurricane Hugo rolled up and destroyed the island's only Olympic-sized swimming pool. So his only other choice was to practice swimming in the ocean. But since old Timmy was scared of sharks, that ended pretty quickly. So at 15 years old in 9th grade, he decided to give up on swimming and give basketball a try. And he was always tall, so that helped him pick up the game pretty easy. Only three years after picking up a basketball, he was averaging 25 points a game as a senior in high school. Then he'd average 16 points, 12 rebounds, and 3 blocks a game through his four years at Wake Forest. In just seven years after playing his first competitive game of basketball ever, Tim Duncan was taken with the first overall pick in the 1997 NBA Draft. So it's safe to say old Timmy was a natural of the game and picked it up pretty quickly. Number 3. Michael Olawakindi. The Candyman was born in Nigeria and moved to England with his family when he was three. Like a true English man, he grew up playing rugby, soccer, track, cricket, and field hockey. He'd go on and finish up high school and was looking up colleges for a mechanical engineering school in America. He called the first school he could find to find out about the degree, and when he mentioned he was seven feet tall, they told him he should join their college and come play basketball while he was at it. And he did just that. He played there for three years, and in his third year there, and his third year ever playing competitive basketball, with never playing basketball in high school, he averaged 22 points, 11 rebounds, and three blocks a game in college. Three years into ever playing the game, he was taken with the first overall pick in the NBA draft by the Los Angeles Clippers as a project for the team. And there's not too much more to say about him after that because, well, you know, he sucked. Number two. Giannis and Tentacupo. Giannis as a kid played soccer like his dad and his older brother, but he had no interest in basketball. But at 13 years old, a youth basketball coach spotted him playing soccer and knew he'd be a great fit for basketball because of his size and character. Now, 13 isn't all too old to start playing basketball, but for the fact that where he's at now is what puts him on the list. That coach promised to find Giannis' parents a job if him and his brother would come play for the team. They did, and Giannis was a natural. By 15 years old, he was playing on the youth team with the which is the second tier of professional basketball in Greece. Three years after that, at 18 years old, he made the senior team. And his play there was so impressive, videos of him got sent around the NBA, and scouts like Danny Ainge came to watch him play. It was a little strange that someone not even playing in the highest league in Greece. But the same happened to Dirk in Germany. Someone who could have made this list too, but didn't. But anyways, in 2013, Giannis Antetokounmpo was taken 15th overall in the NBA draft. Only five I don't years like after this guy right here. He's sitting the right there to where I can barely see him once his stairs fully formed. And number one, Mark Eaton. The list is in no order, but I definitely saved the most insane story for last. Mark Eaton was always tall as a kid, but instead of playing basketball, he liked to play water polo. He did that in his free time, and he eventually graduated high school and the Arizona Automotive My kill, buddy. to become a mechanic. Three years later, at 22 years old, Mark was seven foot four. Tom you idiot, why would you swim? At a local junior college, he stopped by to get his car fixed and saw Eaton working there. 
Talk Mark in the coming of trial for the basketball team. He played one season at Kill? Everest Junior College, averaging 14 points Someone a game, get killed? before being drafted 107th overall by the Suns. But instead, he wanted to keep going to college. But when he transferred to UCLA, he only averaged one point and two rebounds a Dang, game. Dang, if that would have hit. For the rest of his four years at UCLA. So now, no surprise, no NBA teams wanted him. Except for the Utah Jazz, because they said, you can't teach height. And they were right, because look at him, he's huge. So they missed him for the biscuit, and at 25 years old, Mark Eaton had never played basketball as a kid, or in high school, or until 22 years old, and made the NBA after only four years of ever playing. He did turn out to be a dominant defender in the 80s, and one of the best shot blockers in NBA history. Wow, so, so you're not gonna peek me now? Oh boy, okay, yep, I'm not peeking him no more. If you're near seven feet tall, no matter what sport you enjoy playing, if you hate basketball, give it a try because you might make the NBA one day. And the other thing, Hakeem, Dikembe, and Joel were discovered in Africa, but just imagine if no scouts flew out to Africa and ever found them. Think about how many people through the years that were born in Africa or these underdeveloped countries that might have been seven feet tall, that could have been some of the greatest NBA players. Bro, ever I seen, didn't see him. He just discovered. randomly appeared. Cases like that, and there'll probably be a okay. few more in the future. Yep, yeah, congratulations, you killed right me. Now and you're seven feet tall, or in a couple of years, you grow I'm just going to turn you lobby, I guess. Like you give basketball a try. But as always, thank you for watching. Make sure to check out my other videos. Like and subscribe if you're new. And I'll catch you next video. <laughs> Finished all my challenges. I'm tier 56, trying to get to eight ball, which is tier 60. Ooh. And I also want these bank shots. Let's see it, boss pickaxe. Tier 100 is the skin I really want. One style, another style, and another style. That's the style I want, it's right here. Yeah. That'd be nice to have. I really don't care about food right now. As we all know, the NBA draft can either make okay. or break a team. And we're about to find out that it's not so always I'm about to run up into some team rumble. And I know this is going to be boring, but you guys can just sit here and watch if you guys like or <clears throat> don't watch. I don't really care. Because I can get up to 95% of people that are watching aren't watching. Yeah, starting with number My stream has been a 34 minute long stream. Like, who makes a stream that gets nowhere 30, 34 minutes long? Because this stream is going to get nowhere. Guys, so my stream is going to be terrible Tyler right now. Overall, to reserve him for Milwaukee, who then picked Nowitzki ninth, and then Pat Garrity with their 19th pick, which led to the Mavs then trading Trailer for Dirk and Garrity, and then the Mavs traded Garrity to the Suns for Steve Nash, getting two Hall of Fame and future MVPs in one night. Number six, 
The Bulls this. get Scottie Pippen from Seattle. Going into the 1987 NBA draft, the Seattle Supersonics had the I'm so lying you that just said that I didn't even have a gun in my inventory. But Scottie Pippen wasn't gonna drop down to the eighth pick. So the Bulls treated Olden Polonese, who they picked eighth overall, a 1988 second round pick and a 1989 first round pick for Seattle's fifth pick in Scottie Pippen. I might have to stand still, guys. The Sonics because Polonies would only average three points a game for them over the next three seasons before they had to just trade him away. And he would never average more than 12 points a game in his career. And Seattle got no one else really notable from those other picks. But as for the Bulls, well, we all know how Scottie Pippen turned out to be a Hall of Famer and an all-time great. Number five. Um, guys, I might have to end the stream. I just got a notification that um my Wi-Fi is not living up to the stream. So I either deal with this terrible lag or I just end the stream. Which I'd rather not end the stream, but I guess I might. On a 34 minute run and, or a 37 minute run and can't keep it going because my Wi-Fi is giving out. There it goes, now it's coming back up. It's getting better. You wouldn't suspect that from my Wi-Fi. My Wi-Fi is normally good unless there's a bunch of people on it like there was earlier. I would have started the stream at like a lot earlier than what I did. If it would have been. My Wi-Fi would have been cooperating with me. And my friend was gonna pull an all-nighter with me, but he decided to go to bed and didn't stay up with me. Which I can understand if he had stuff going on, but he said he was just gonna be at home all day. He was gonna play Fortnite in the morning. and So, yeah, he went to bed. Doesn't surprise me. All my friends give out on me really quick and easily. I know if I'm boring, it's because I'm not talking, and the reason I'm not talking is because I'm either focused thinking, or I'm making sure I'm doing everything that I wanted to do, which there is no upgrader there. Oh, there it is. Well, I want a scar, that's what I'm gonna do, is get a scar. See how much materials I have left. See how far I can upgrade this.
Oh, I'm so close. Like, I just want it. Oh, yeah, I'm getting that pump. Here comes, cheer up. I might end my stream at tier when I tear up. Cause yeah, I don't feel like staying on all night on the stream all night or all morning now. Cause right now it is 4.54 for me. Other people it's probably earlier or later. Dang, this kid's already building, like why? Dang, one one shot me, like how? Here we go, you ready? About to get a kill and then I'm about to go tear up. Oh my god, that's a lot of people. I'm getting destroyed, bro. Like, they're all just in a group. Like, I hope I get an advantage on this group and I'll take them all out. Got him. That should be tear up. Are you kidding me? You little fag took my st oh, tear up. And I got a new outfit. I don't that's not even in the battle pass. I'll check that out after this game. Yeah, I honestly wish I wasn't streaming when I decided to waste all my mats on 90s that weren't even good because I was streaming. Oh yeah, you think you're big, strong, and tough? Break my wall, I dare you, buddy. Oh, instead you're gonna land on me now? What? Did you guys see how laggy that was? I'm probably gonna finish this game out and end the stream because I'm trying to play some actual Fortnite instead of just like, messing around and Bro, I should have killed him. I'm lagging. Yeah, I might just end the stream right here because my Wi-Fi is not holding this stream like it's supposed to be. Like, do you see this? I'm lagging so much that I couldn't even do that. Why? Damn, I'm just gonna get tagged like that. Fuck you. Bitch. Oops, sorry guys, excuse my language. Just, you get so angry, you don't even know what you're doing anymore. And of course, I'm out of SMG ammo because faggots like him wanna mess with me.
See, like, I can't even go ramp. What? Nobody. Why? It doesn't do anything. Uh. I'm loud? Yep, I wasted mats on a golden or on a purple scar that I didn't even get to really use anyway. Oh shoot, that's my teammate. Where's the kid that's gliding then? There you are. Got him. Got him. Dang, I really just lost. Okay, guys, I'm gonna end the stream with that. Thank you to all my watchers in advance. Probably stream later today. Remember, I got friends to play with. Peace out and.